Hi, so now we're gradually starting on encoding with logistic regression. As you can see here in this module, we'll learn how to perform binary classification in scikit-learn with logistic regression. We'll take a look at something called the iris dataset, which is a classic in machine learning, which is ideal for testing out classification algorithms. And finally, we'll talk about the accuracy score. Here you can see some functions and attributes that we'll use in this lecture. And here you can see some of the default packages that we'll use that we've all seen previously. So we have NumPy imported as NP, Pandas as PD, and we import from sklearn datasets, and also from the model selection we import train test split. In the first video, we'll just look at what's called the iris dataset. So first of all, we of course need to load this thing in. And again, as previously, we should get an X and a Y. So X is the features and Y is the target here. We go to datasets and then we do load, just try to type complete here, load iris. And as usual, I want to return x, y equals true. And I want to return this as a frame. These are just some standard parameters that you need to deal with if you're doing this datasets loading from scikit-learn's datasets. What I also like to do is just to print out the description. So let's take this whole thing here and return it. Here, just pass in the specific key, D-E-R-C-R, -R, which is just an abbreviation of description. And if I run this, you can see here some information about the iris dataset. This is called the iris plant dataset. You have 150 instances. Instances is essentially just a synonym for observations. And we have attributes, which is a synonym for features. So we have four numeric ones, predictive attributes, and then we have the class. So the attributes we have are sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. In the class, we're going to predict is either iris setusa, Iris versicolor or Iris virginica. And Steen and I realized when making these videos that not everyone might know what irises really are. So we went out to a local botanical garden and took some pictures. Here you can see the picture we took today of an iris flower. There are a bunch of different iris flowers. There are essentially roughly 300 varieties, I think. It's not always so easy to know which of them it is by simply looking at them. So here you can see a bunch of different irises. And here you can also see another specific one that we took. So in the data set that we have, there has been collected information about 150 such flowers. And each of the observations should belong to a distinct species. And the goal is to take some of the features of the plant, like the sepal length and so on, to predict essentially which kind of species it is. You can also see here some summary statistics in the description and also some information about missing attributes values, in which there are none, and also some more information. I'll let you read this yourself if you want to. I'm just going to skip down here and go to describe the features. So again, in this first video, I'll just essentially explore the data set. And then in the next video, we'll start with the specific logistic regression modeling. So first of all, I think it's appropriate to just go into X and look at describe. So here you can see some statistical information. Again, we have 150 for each of them. But also you can see here that the mean differs quite a bit from each of them. You can see also that there is quite a big variance from the minimal observation to the maximal. Here's maybe not so big, here is 4.3 up to 7.9, so almost a double. But here for, for instance, petal width, it is from 0.1 to 2.5. So that's a 25 times increase. It's quite a big one also for the petal length. So let's also look at some of the data types. And to do that, we can use the info method. So you can see the four of them, all of them are floating point values. You have 150 of them, they're all non-null, so nothing is missing. It's nice to just verify personally that this is actually true. So now we've looked a tiny bit at X, so the features, so maybe let's look at the targets. So for Y, what you can do is to use the methods value counts. This is a nice panda method that essentially takes Y and explains how many of the different values there are. So inside Y, there is 50 values with zero. 50 values with a 1, and 50 values with a 2. So these represent the three species. And as you can see, there are equally many of each of them, 150 in total and 50 for each class. That means that the data set is what we call perfectly balanced. There are equally many observations in each of the categories. So if you recall back, we're supposed to do binary classification in this video. That means classification with just two classes. But here we have three classes. So just for simplicity, I'll just essentially remove everything from this class. So we just have the two final classes to worry about. So the easiest way to do this is just to reassign x. So type everything for observation 50 and onwards and just do the same for y. 
But notice now that for y, all the values that are left have either the value 1 or 2. And I told you that it's very convenient in terms of binary classification to have them encoded as 0 and 1. What I'll simply do is to just remove 1. That means that everything here will be called the 0 class, and everything here will be called the 1 class. So let's run this. Now I want to collect all the variables together. So let's just make a variable simply called all variables, then concut them together. So pandas has this concut method that we can just combine together both x and y as this. And here we also need to specify that the axis we want to combine on is equal to 1. This means that we combine them along the columns, not along the rows. Now what I want to do is to check the correlation here. But maybe firstly, let's simply just print this out. Or maybe use the head method to get just some of them so that we can actually see. So you can see that we have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and then the target is zero. What we can do now, since we have them collected, is to use the pandas method cov. So cov is abbreviated from correlation, and the correlation here shows you how the different features are related to each other and also to the target. So correlations take value between minus one and one, and a correlation value of one between two columns here means that it's perfectly correlated. So you can see here one, that means that it has perfect correlation with itself. So given itself, you can completely determine itself. This doesn't really say anything interesting. With these correlation matrices, the diagonal here is not really that interesting. Values close to one means that there is a high correlation. So for instance, here you can see 0.82, which is quite high. This is the relation between the sepal length and the petal length. So this is quite highly correlated. What we are typically interested in when doing machine learning is the relationship here with the target value. We want to know which of the features affect the target the most. And as you can see here from the target, sepal length affected quite a bit, 0.49, that's not too bad. Sepal width affected not so much. So that means that there aren't such a strong correlation between target and sepal width. But on the other hand, you can see here both the petal length and the petal width is quite highly correlated. That means that we can often expect that these play a very prominent role in trying to classify one of these target into the correct class. So before finishing this section, let's do a small visualization. I want to take all the variables and I want to do a scatter plot. I think this is just scatter. Let's see. Yeah. So I want to do a scatter plot. And here let's take x to be the sepal length. I need to spell it precisely correctly here. So it's sepal length centimeter. And then I will like the y value to be petal length, also in centimeters. And then the interesting is that I can specify a coloring by just specifying C here. And of course, the coloring I want to be the target. And just as some small design choice, what can be nice here is you also specify what's called the color map. For color map, you can choose between some predefined values. I think Viridis is one of them. And here you can see the visualization. So let's try to understand this. Here on the x-axis, we have this sepal length. And here on the y-axis, we have this petal length. And the coloring here indicates the target. So notice that there are no intermediate colors. So here you can see some green and so on. These aren't really happening here. This is because target only contains either a 0 or 1. There's nothing in between. So what can you really say about this plotting? You can say, for instance, here that when the sepal length, the one we have on x-axis, is quite big, so around here, then essentially all of them with such a big sepal length are in the yellow class. And yellow class represents class one. On the other hand, if you have very small values of sepal length, then you can be reasonably sure that the things here are essentially in the zeroth class. Maybe you can start to visualize in your head that if you were to take a line and separate this, remember this decision boundary we talked about in the slide, if you want to take a line here and try to cut it off so that on one side, everything is on one class and on the other, everything is in the other, now this is not completely possible. I think the best thing I can do here with these variables is to take a line that goes roughly here. It will almost work, but not perfectly. There will be some observations that I will misclassify. So if my line here is here, let's say roughly at five, completely horizontal line, then essentially there will be some purple dot that's over the line that should be classified as purple, and there will be a few yellow ones below the line. It's very often the case in practice that it's not possible to make such a line that is perfectly separating the classes. So you will have some misclassifications, but you can see here that still we could make do with a rather good one just from visualization. Rather than visualizing and picking out these decision boundaries visually, we should use a machine learning model like logistic regression to get a decision boundary that is really great. So in the next video, we're going to start here, as you can see, with logistic regression, implementing this in scikit-learn and trying to classify these species of iris flowers. 